Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to be talking about my landscape photography settings for the Fuji X-T2 and the Fuji X-T3. So when I'm out and about doing my landscape photography vlogs and I'm taking landscape photos, I quite often share how I set the shot up, composition, lighting, all of those types of things, but I don't actually say how the camera's set up. So I thought it'd be really good to go over that in one short video today, all of my settings for the Fuji X-T2 and the X-T3. So before I start, I'd like to thank everybody that's recently subscribed to the channel. It really does mean the world. I'd also like to thank everybody else for continuing to watch and support me. Without you guys, I really couldn't make these videos. So your support is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel and you like landscape photography and, you know, Fuji related stuff, you know, please consider subscribing. So we're out in the landscape every week shooting stuff and just generally having fun with these awesome cameras. So I've also had a few comments regarding the dead pixel problem I had with the Fuji X-T3. And I'll be talking about that at the end. So stay tuned if you're interested in finding out more about that and what I'm kind of doing regarding that situation. So that being said, let's dive into my landscape photography settings for the Fuji X-T2 and the Fuji X-T3. So when I'm out in the landscape, I have two different ways of shooting really. One where I set the camera from a tripod, take my time and try to get the most I possibly can from that particular opportunity. And the other is more of a run and gun style when I'm walking or hiking. Uh, I generally have the camera set up differently so I can grab shots quickly. So two completely different setups. So I'm going to talk about both. First of all, we're going to talk about my kind of tripod setup. So my more kind of standard landscape photography shot. So when I'm composing a landscape photography shot, I really like to use the tripod. I think it really helps me slow down and just, you know, spend a bit more time in that particular location. And for this reason, I shoot everything manually as well. So. So let's take a look at the top dials first, as these are the self-explanatory really. I just use the top dials to control my settings, so ISO, shutter speed and aperture, and these will be set depending on what I'm shooting and the lighting conditions at that time. For long exposures, I'll use the timer or bulb mode depending on the time and the requirement. So underneath the ISO dial, we have the drive dial. For landscape photography, I only use two functions here, the single frame shot and the bracketing shot. The single frame shot as it suggests, you press the shutter and one frame is taken. Next, we have bracketing, and I set this up as follows. Auto exposure bracketing, five frames, two thirds of a stop increments, meaning I have one and a third stops of light covered either side of my base exposure. I find this works really well for most cases, but I may alter this if needed. Occasionally, I'll use the focus stacking bracketing feature, and I've done another video on this, so I'll leave the link to that one in the description. So moving on to the metering mode, this really isn't that relevant when I've got my camera on the tripod as I'm shooting completely in manual. So I'll use the LCD and the histogram to get my correct exposure. But as default, it is set to matrix. Also, I'm not using the exposure compensation dial when I've got my camera locked down on the tripod as again, I'm shooting in manual, so I don't need this. So let's move on to the front function button. I've set this to self timer. So this quickly lets me switch between the two second and the 10 second timer, which I use all of the time to avoid camera shake. This saves me deep diving into the menus and saves loads of time and hassle. So the top function button I use for video and lets me swap between slow motion and my usual video settings. So this is not really relevant to today's video because we're talking about landscape photography. I'm not using the front command dial at all when I've got the camera locked down on the tripod. The rear command dial I've set to focus check so I can punch in and check my focus when I'm focusing manually. If you push it, you can also swap between focus peaking and the standard view. Rotating the front dial allows me to make micro adjustments to my shutter speed. I use the auto focus lock button to quickly grab focus. I always manually focus when I have the camera on the tripod. So this will help me if I just need to quickly focus on a certain point in the scene, like my foreground interest, for example. So I use the auto exposure lock for a video function to switch face recognition on and off. So again, this is not really relevant for landscape photography. So moving on to the selector buttons. Now if I press right, it takes me to my white balance settings. And generally, I've got this set to daylight. Having it set to daylight means I've got consistent white balance throughout all of my shots. So if I decide to take a bracketing, I'm not getting any, you know, white balance shift between shots. So having it set to daylight gives me that consistent uh, white balance settings throughout all of my images and obviously if we're shooting raw we can adjust that white balance later in post-production. The left button takes me to my film simulations which I use Provia for my landscape shots. I find this gives me a fairly neutral look and helps me keep my histogram fairly similar to that of the raw file. 
So the histogram is built from a JPEG file that you've set. So this can make a big difference if you're, say, using Velvia, where there's a lot of contrast in that particular profile. You might get false histogram readings. So I've covered the histogram in another video, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below if you fancy checking that out. There's a lot of information on there regarding setting up the histogram. So pressing down takes me to my dynamic range settings. I don't tend to use this for landscape photography, though. Onto the rear LCD screen. I like to keep this really simple. I don't use a touchscreen at all. For me, one of the reasons I love the Fuji X-T2 and the Fuji X-T3 so much is for their tactile analog feel. So using the touchscreen just doesn't really feel right for me, but that's just a personal preference. As you can see, I've always got the camera in boost mode to get the best possible performance. I also have the focus scale set on, which helps me with focusing and my depth of field. I also have the histogram on the live view, which I rely on so much for my landscape photography. As you can see up the top here, I shoot in RAW to one card and a JPEG as a backup to the other. So this just helps keep things all in order. As you can see, I like to keep the process as simple as possible. So when I've finished my dedicated landscape photography shot, if you like, taking the camera off the tripod, what I tend to do before I do anything else is change my settings. And I kind of call this kind of my walk around or walk about mode. It's a bit more automatic, but it still gives me full control over the camera. And I do this because quite often I'll see something that I want to shoot really quickly, like uh, wildlife, for example, I might be in the wooden, I might see a deer, I want to capture that, or I might be in the hills and see a mountain hare, I want to grab that shot. If I've got to get my camera out of the bag and change all the settings, I'll probably miss that opportunity. So I completely change the way it's set up, but I can do this quite quickly before I pack everything away. I also use a fantastic device which I'll you know, just quickly tell you about and that's the Peak Design Capture Clip. And it's a clip that clips onto my rucksack strap or my belt and it enables me to fix my camera on there and I can really quickly take the camera off the strap and shoot within a few seconds. And that's really, really important for capturing things on the fly. It's also got an Arca Swiss mount on it as well, so I can take it straight off the clip and put it straight on the tripod if I need to. So it's a fantastic device. I'll link to it in the description so you can go and check it out. The price on this is always changing, so it's worth checking that out. So back to the settings for my walk around mode. So basically I turn the camera into aperture priority mode. So I set the ISO dial to A or auto and have my lowest shutter speed set to 1 160th of a second. This means my shutter will not drop below this as the ISO will be raised to compensate it. So this is great for freezing motion or if I have my telephoto lens on. The shutter dial is also set to auto. The exposure compensation dial is set to C and I use a front command dial to adjust my exposure. I have the focus mode selector set to S or single point autofocus. So to take a quick shot, all I need to do is select my aperture, adjust my exposure using the front command dial, select my focus point using the joystick, half press the focus and shoot. Job's a good one. Nice and quick and easy, but still with a really good deal of control. So this is also how I shoot most of my documentary and candid wedding photography as well. It's a really good, quick setup for grabbing shots on the fly. So quickly onto the pixel problem I had. So if you haven't checked those videos out, I'll leave those in the links below as well. So I've got a dead pixel on my X-T3 and it's very, very noticeable when I'm shooting 120 frames per second slow motion and also 1080p if I've got a dark background shooting towards light. You can really, it really stands out. You can't really see it in 4K and you can't see it at all on the stills. So it's not a massive issue, but I still wish it didn't exist. So what I've done, instead of sending it back again, uh, I've decided not to shoot in 1080p anymore and I'm very rarely using the 120 frames per second slow motion. Um, and actually, having kind of forced that upon myself, I've been enjoying shooting that way a lot more. So instead of shooting 120, I'm shooting 60 frames per second in 4K. So that's giving me a better image quality, a better high resolution files to work with. I'm also able to record audio as well. Um, so if I've got some audio captured, I could probably use that for something else after I've slowed it down. So yeah, that has some benefits as well. I can also slow that 60 frames per second down a little bit in post-production as well if I need to get it slower. But I've been finding actually for weddings that 60 frames per second is, uh, you know, it's working out really well actually. So yeah, all in all, I don't think I'm going to send it back. I just don't have time. I'm shooting at least one wedding a week now until October. I'm out shooting the vlogs and stuff every week as well. So the camera is pretty much in use two or three times a week. So there's just little time for me to send it back for repair. So I'm sticking with it. And to be honest, 
Uh, having changed the way I shoot, I'm actually enjoying shooting this way a little more than I was previously. So uh, all in all, you know, I'm just going to stick with it, I think. Please don't take this as a negative. Um, this is an amazing camera. The X-T3 is an absolutely superb camera. The more I use it, the more I love it, especially for video work. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, you might like to catch up on some of my vlogs. I'll leave a playlist over there and also some of my landscape photography tips, which I'll put over here. The subscribe button's down the bottom there if you fancy checking that out. But until next week, guys, I'll see you soon and take care.